Welcome to chapter 11, Population Growth. In this chapter, we'll briefly touch on geometric growth and exponential growth, and then we'll focus mainly on the logistic population growth formula and curve. And then I'll talk about the limits to population growth and discuss how those limits are density dependent and density independent. Geometric growth pattern is seen in annual plants where you have the uh, if every generation has a constant ratio of increase and so here we, we can see a dramatic increase over the years as they explained in the book for the hypothetical population of flocks. The exponential growth rate is described by the formula dn dt equals r max times n. Here we dn stands for the change in population and dt stands for the change in time. So it's the change in population over the change in time equals r max, which is the maximum reproductive rate, times n, the population size. A more realistic description of actual population growth is the logistic population growth. And this accounts for the population running into resource limitations. And so the, the curve takes on a sigmoid shape, or S shape, and the leveling off point is the carrying capacity of the population or the number of individuals that the environment can support in a particular area. As you can see in this diagram of the logistic curve, the population grows very, very quickly and then starts to slow down and levels off as it reaches the carrying capacity. Experiments carried out with protozoans in the lab and barnacles have shown that populations of these species follow the logistic curve as they reach resource limitations and level off. So this uh, type of growth is depicted here in this formula where we have dn dt again equals r max the maximum reproductive rate times n the population size but then we put in a factor there that limits the population as its growth reaches the carrying capacity k and that gives it that s-shaped or sigmoidal shaped and so we call n over k environmental resistance the environmental resistance is made up of density dependent factors and density independent factors. The density dependent factors are things like disease and the depletion of resources based on competition. Uh, we see this happening in, uh, in the Great Lakes where the salmon were depleted at one point because there wasn't enough food for them and in their uh, reduced state, they actually suffered from a disease more extensively. Bacterial kidney disease was a big problem. And then density independent factors are things like natural disasters. And it doesn't make any difference how many individuals there are. They still suffer from these. In the last section of the chapter, then, the author gives you an example based on the Galapagos finches of how a variety of different natural factors affected the population of the finches on the Galapagos Islands. And you could see how the different species reacted differently to these environmental resistance factors. So I think you're getting the idea, based on my coverage of this chapter, that I'm not really interested in you focusing on, on the detail uh, of this chapter other than 
the logistic curve and understanding and being able to calculate that uh, and, and understanding the basic principles that are associated with that. So as you prepare for the test next week, feel free to email me with any questions that you might have about the chapters 7 through 11, and I'll try to answer those as quickly as possible. Music